I, I think everyone knows we, we've lost uh, just uh, actually the first member, Luis, uh, and uh, some of us, uh, some of you uh, went to his memorial service yesterday, which was beautiful and packed. Um, just everyone loved Luis. Uh, but Mary, his wife, wrote up a, a little uh, biography about him and talked about him. And one thing she mentioned was this Tolstoy um, story, which she said uh, Luis really liked a lot. I, I don't recall him ever telling me about it, but it's great. So I thought I'd just talk about that in honor of Luis and also because it's really great. Um, so this story is entitled The Three Questions. It's about a young boy who searches for the answer to three of life's big questions. When is the best time to do things? Who is the most important one? What is the right thing to do? And this questioning, it, it's similar to the story of, of all of our Buddha ancestors. Buddha um, also had three questions, if you recall, because uh, his father had him locked up because a soothsayer had said that he would either be a great general warrior or he would be a um, spiritual person uh, devote his life to spirituality and of course dad wanted him to be a warrior so he kept him uh, locked up in the incredibly wealthy compound with everything you could ever want no suffering at all. But uh, young Shakyamuni jumped over the wall and he, his, he saw a, a uh, old person, a sick person, and a body. So he kind of had three questions about what is this sickness, old age, and death? And the big question was, why is there suffering? Why? <laughs> um, so anyway, this young boy, and, and like I said, all of our ancestors, and I think most of you have some kind of question that is just, is just eating, it just eats at us. What is my life? Who am I? How does this stuff work? I remember thinking about it when I was very little. What is this? I mean, everybody's talking about don't throw food and stuff like that, but nobody's talking about what are we doing here? How did I get here? Help, what is this? Uh, so this is the spiritual questioning. And this boy's three questions, when is the best time to do things? I mean, I think you guys all know the answer is now. When is the best time to do things? Now. Uh, very Zen, this moment, and we've been talking about Uji, time being, which is this moment includes everything. So uh, when we're stuck in the past, uh, just uh, um, filled with regret, filled with guilt, filled with what I should have done, filled with nostalgic. I want it to be like it was when I was 28. Uh, but we suffer. And in the same way, if we're just always worrying about the future, um, like I have, when I travel, I have three GPSs. Because <laughs> I do tend to get lost but also because I worry about the future. I, if there was another, and, and like Facebook has got me figured out, so every new GPS comes along, I get the advertisement for it. But uh, yeah, we can really suffer with worrying about what's gonna happen. Just be here. The, so the, the best time to do things is now. 
Uh, there's a story about um, when Dogen went to China, Dogen Zenji is one of our main teachers. He founded our school in Japan, uh, but before he did that, he traveled to China and uh, he was hanging out in the monastery and just kind of seeing how things worked. And there's this old guy, even older than me, I think this guy he was about 80. And uh, he was the Tenzo, the cook. And he was out in the hot sun without a hat, drawing mushrooms, just washing and putting mushrooms on a rack to dry. And Dogen was just appalled that this old guy was out here working so hard. And um, he said, why don't you get someone else to do this? And, he, and the old guy said, if not me, who? If not now, and don't do it in the hot sun. If not now, when? Um, so this same, uh, what this, and, and Dogen was so moved by that Tenzo. He's so affected by that story. Uh, just taking care of what needs to be taken care of moment after moment. So that's the first one. Then the second one is, who is the most important one? The one you're with, right? You know that song, if you can't be with the one you love, love the one you're with, which I thought was the Stones, but since I watched the whole Beatles thing and I've learned more about 60s music than, <laughs> than I certainly knew at the time, uh, I think it was Stephen Stills who wrote that. But didn't the, anyway, never mind uh, about the music. <laughs> Let's not talk about the music. But if you can't be with the one you love, love the one you're with. I hated that when I heard that song because I had crushes, you know, my life. I had to be with the cool people. I had to whatever, had ideas about um, people. Uh, so love the one you're with. And it doesn't mean not making good boundaries. That's part of what love is, making good boundaries with each other. It, in my opinion, I, this is kind of my, I'm really focusing now on, on relationship because it's one thing to get enlightened for yourself. So this is what happened to Buddha too. You see um, who you are, uh, you realize the oneness of all things and that this little self is, is uh, a dream an idea, uh, and it's wonderful, it's so freeing, it means everything's perfect, it's wonderful. But then what? Buddha thought he'd die. Buddha thought he would see that and then he'd just die because uh, he'd be over with it. But he found out it's just the beginning, that realization of oneness is just the beginning. Um, then comes the bodhisattva life, which is, um, how we interact with the world, how we live our life. Uh, my teacher, Bernie Glassman said, uh, you know, someone asked him, how do you tell someone's enlightened? And he said, by how they live. So someone like Luis Moronis, uh, oh my God, look at that man's life. Look at all those people yesterday, all of them loving him, all of them having a positive relationship with him. Uh, there ever was a person who lived a life of love. It was Luis. Uh, so, so this is something I'm really focusing on now, looking at relationship. How, how do we realize that oneness together and, and have positive, harmonious, whatever, true, relationships. And that does not mean not to have boundaries. That does not mean to just hang out with somebody who's mean to me. I get to say, I can't be with you. Uh, so how did, I'm not going to tell you how to do it because I don't know. But uh, the most important person is the one you're with. So right now it's us. We're all the most important person. It's awesome. <laughs> 
And then third part is um, what is the right thing to do? And I'm going to tell you about this uh, short story I read, which I'm not sure what you'll think. You don't have to agree with me about it. Um, it it's by this guy named George Saunders. No, no relationship. It's called The Falls. And it's about this guy who's really very self-critical. And he's walking along the river. And he it's stream of consciousness. And he's thinking, oh, I hate my job. I had such a great, great plans for my life. And now I have this horrible job and I hate it. And then he'd go, yes, but really you're lucky to have a job. Many people don't have a job. So I think we do that, right? You do that, where we go back and forth. And then he's thinking, uh, oh, I just hate being so poor. My house is so often awful and everything's falling apart. But I love my kids. I, it's wonderful. I love my kids. And, and then he thinks, uh, but my kids aren't much. They're not ever going to be famous or take care of me or anything. And so he's going back and forth and um, really disliking himself and seeing himself as a weak, ineffectual, ineffectual um, kind of a failure, kind of a loser. Um, and, and he's talking to himself about this and feeling bad about how he is. And he's, he's shy and timid and a mild man, very ordinary person like most of us probably. And then there's this canoe that goes by with two girls in it and they don't have paddles. And he realizes there's a falls here in his town. There's a river and then a falls. And there's kind of a snag place that people get caught on before they go over the falls. And they get caught on that snag. Their canoe starts to fall apart and their faces are bloody. And really the only thing that could happen is they're going to die. They're going to go over that falls. And then he starts thinking, oh, if only there were real men here, strong men with ropes. The, the story is kind of funny. It's only there was a man with a strong man, a brave man with a rope uh, to save these girls. And um, I, I hope it's not left to me. It can't be left to me. Uh, and, uh, and he realizes he can't run for help. Uh, he also realizes they're probably going to die. This is the part of the story Bear's thinking about. But then, and he's got this voice going on in his head, and then he takes off his shoes and leaps, leaps across the water. And that's the last sentence. We don't know what happens. <laughs> um, and I just want to say I'm not encouraging any of you to become martyrs. <laughs> the, you know, he was a father, and he probably died. The, all indications are. But what I love is that leap to save them. Uh, I just love that sentence. And the, the guy who read it talked about, Apparently, somebody rescued some people, and I can't remember what kind of rescue it was, but off a mountain or whatever. And at the when the really dangerous moment of rescue, what uh, happened was um, the person who was rescuing um, had this incredible experience of oneness with the victim. Like in that moment, and that was a successful rescue. In that moment, there was no separation. Um, and then he was able, she was able to rescue whoever it was. So I kind of felt that in that story too, is like seeing what needed to be done. And then all of a sudden he was those girls. He had to be there. He had to make that leap. So just thought it may be relevant to 
What is the right thing to do? That's the hardest one here. What is the right thing to do? The time is now, the people is us, and what is the right thing to do? Uh, and to me, that's just such an important practice for all of us. I mean, things are so difficult right now, but to really look at what is the right thing to do and the story and what Buddha taught, the right thing to do is to realize the oneness of all beings. Uh, that out of that, when we give up separation and when we give up our desperately clinging to survival, to have enough money, to have enough GPSers, uh, that then the right thing does open up. Um, and like I said, I'm, I don't think he should have died <laughs> to save the girls, but I love that out of his busy mind, out of all his thinking about it, he just leaped. Uh, so I think that's something that comes out of our practice. And certainly Luis, oh my God, you know, just people say it over and over again. I just can't think of a time that Luis was awkward or, I mean, he was mad, but not, you know, he would be angry when, when there were difficulties and, and he'd, he'd suggest, let's do this, let's do that. I wouldn't say angry, he was concerned. He wasn't just, oh, everything's good. But, uh, uh, but he always was leaping to uh, a solution. He'd say, well, let's have counsel about that. Well, let's talk about that. Uh, well, I could talk to that person. Um, so. Oh, and then the story, actually, I wanted to tell Sean this story, but uh, uh, come on in. You can come closer if you want. Hi, what's your name? Hi, Grayson. Grayson? Mm -hmm. Welcome. <laughs> We're at the end. You <laughs> missed a song. great talk. <laughs> <laughs> You're sure. <laughs> but just to end it, oh, the coals, um, which those of you, this is a repeat from yesterday. Um, the One of the priests uh, told the story about Oh no, I can't remember who told it. Um, but there's a, a bunch of kids at a camp, camp out. It's a church camp out. And um, they're sitting around the fire with the minister and, um, and the one boy says, uh, how come we have to do it together? How can we have to worship together? You know, this is a Catholic um, church camp. But so why do we have to worship together? Why do we have to get up and go on Sunday and worship together and, and practice together? And the, the uh, priest takes a coal out of the fire and he sets it away from the fire. Uh, and of course, by itself, the coal dies. So I think you get it that um, uh, when we're on our own, it's very hard to keep the fire of uh, intention to realize the way, uh, to keep that passion going is really hard by ourselves because this is a hard practice. Uh, it takes discipline, it takes not being happy, uh, sitting with discomfort, sitting with uh, the things that we maybe don't like to look at about ourselves. It means making that vow to see what's true for me. Um, and just really need each other uh, to find the energy to really practice together.
So I love that story as a one way of talking about why we practice together as a group. And now it's hard because everybody has busy schedules. So to be there sitting at the same time that everybody else is, uh, it's hard. It's easier with Zoom now that we have all the folks on Zoom. Uh, but anyway, that's all I have to say. Um, are there any comments or questions?